What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and in this video I want to cover quite a few pressing issues across the modern media landscape. From video games to comics and even streaming services, it seems the lengths corporations will go to these days to ruin everything we love is still going strong. So let's talk about a lot of the craziness going on, and I also want to show how other creators are giving us strong examples that good stories can still happen too. To start off, I want to talk about Final Fantasy XVI, which is by far my most anticipated game this year. That game stars Clive Rosefield, who goes on a journey of revenge across the world as it's torn asunder by massive kaiju beings known as icons. The gameplay looks incredible, as it's designed by Ryota Suzuki, who's the mastermind behind action masterpieces like Devil May Cry 5. Everything about Final Fantasy XVI looks like it's going to be a Game of the Year contender and will be one of PlayStation 5's most important titles this year. But amidst the hype, there's been a souring controversy from woke activists who've claimed Square Enix is racist because there's not enough people of color within Final Fantasy XVI. It's incredible to me that you can look at a game like this, which is made by Japanese developers no less, and somehow instead of being excited to play, people will actually look for any reason to get upset or triggered. The devs have explained already that XVI's world of Valisthea is a direct homage to medieval Europe. Its showcasing of primarily white characters is because Valisia is an isolated realm. Naoki Yoshida, who's one of the leading producers on the game, spoke out against the outrage saying, and I quote, This is a difficult question, but not one that was unexpected, seeing as diversity in entertainment media has become a much-discussed topic as of late. The answer I have, however, may end up being disappointing to some depending on individual expectations. The game's design has heavily featured medieval Europe and rather than create something on a global scale, it was necessary to limit the scope to a single landmass, one geographically and culturally isolated from the rest of the world in an age without airplanes, television, or telephones. Due to the underlying geographical, technological, and geopolitical constraints of this setting, Valesia was never going to realistically be as diverse as, say, a modern-day Earth. Or even Final Fantasy XIV that has an entire planet and moon worth of nations, races, and cultures at its disposal. The isolated nature of this realm, however, does end up playing a large part in the story and is one of the reasons Valesia's fate is tied to the rest of the world. Ultimately, we felt that while incorporating ethnic diversity into Valisthea was important, an over-incorporation into the single corner of a much larger world could end up causing a violation of those narrative boundaries we originally set for ourselves. The story we are telling is fantasy, yes, but it is also rooted in reality. It can be challenging to assign distinctive ethnicities to either antagonist or protagonist without triggering audience preconceptions inviting unwarranted speculation and ultimately stoking flames of controversy. In the end, we simply want the focus to be less on the outward appearance of our characters and more on who they are as people. People who are complex and diverse in their natures, backgrounds, beliefs, personalities, and motivations. People whose stories we can resonate with. There is diversity in Valisthea. Diversity that, while not all-encompassing, is synergistic with the setting we've created and is true to the inspirations from which we are drawing." End quote. Naoki Yoshida brilliantly dismantles the woke mind virus in this stunning statement and I love how Square Enix's principal philosophy for 16 isn't creating a world full of diversity for diversity's sake, but instead staying true to what actually matters when it comes to a quality product which is telling a good story. I also love how Yoshida says the team's goals with their characters is less about their appearances and more about who they are as people. It's genuinely why I'm so goddamn excited for 16. Because it's a rare example of modern gaming that isn't integrating diversity just to get digital pats on the back from journalistic publications. They're far more interested in telling a good story than having someone's skin color look a certain way so people won't yell at them. Mark my words, when 16 comes out, you'll see places like IGN, Kotaku, and GameSpot all say in their reviews the game would have been better if it had diversity. And they will also likely mark the game down some points simply because it didn't bend the knee, but that's where we are today, unfortunately. On the flip side of wokeness ruining many aspects of, well, everything, lately I've been enjoying my time with Star Wars Jedi Survivor. The game's fun to play, and the Force powers are just so much fun to use against Imperial scum. 
But one thing I've noticed while playing is how Jedi Survivor feels very authentically Star Wars and unlike the Disney Plus versions of Star Wars in the form of Obi-Wan Kenobi or Mando, which are two shows that undermine the male leads for their female characters, Jedi Survivor feels like a real story with actual well-written characters. No spoilers for Jedi really here, so don't worry, but I love how Cal Kestis is a true strong male character. He doesn't get sidelined or undermined by the supporting cast, and while he has doubts and weaknesses, he's supported by the rich cast around him. One character in Jedi that feels weirdly great is Bode Akuna. He's this extremely strong and charismatic male character that fights for his friends. Of course, I'm not done the game yet, but so far it's weirdly strange seeing two extremely strong and masculine men in Star Wars of all things. And to add to this positivity, there's also Marin, who's a badass green magic wielding night sister. She's probably the biggest surprise since Marin is not only a strong female character, but she's also in love with Cal Kestis and actually shows empathy and tenderness towards him. I honestly feel like I'm in some bizarro world when I play Jedi Survivor, because for one, there's actual strong male representation and a female co-lead who doesn't belittle her male counterparts. She's also straight, which, let's be real, is severely rare today when it comes to literally any strong female character these days. So when I watch a scene where Cal and Marin are enjoying each other's company by a fire amidst a sandstorm, I actually thought to myself in that moment, oh my god, I am actually witnessing two genuinely strong characters who love each other that don't push messages down my throat, and this is canon and within Star Wars. In the year 2023, what the hell is going on here. Jedi Survivor honestly feels like what Star Wars should be aiming towards in every way. Its story is good, its characters aren't pushing messages 24-7, and nobody feels like a Mary Sue. The difference in authentic genuine joy I feel towards someone like Bode or Marin is paramount when compared to travesties like the pink-haired Admiral Lady, whose name I don't remember, and Mary Sue Ray herself. Why can't the movies be like Jedi Survivor, or the Disney Plus shows? It's kind of sad really that I was taken aback by the actual masculine aura of Cal and Bode and the feminine ray of light that is Marin here. This is what we're missing in today's media, and this is why games like Jedi Survivor will sell well, and it has done extremely well critically. These kinds of characters feel like real people and proves what Naoki Yoshida said earlier about Final Fantasy XVI. That it doesn't matter what your characters look like as long as they are genuinely interesting and great. On the flip side, you have Marvel Comics, who can't seem to catch a win if their lives depended on it. Recently, a single panel from one of Marvel's books has become infamous due to how stupidly on brand it is for the publisher. Here we have The Thing from the Fantastic Four having a talk with an audience, where a fellow rock lady gets up to the podium to ask questions. The Thing essentially wants to better the world however he can before he dies, to which this character says, Respectively, sir, you were a cis white male until cosmic rays turned you into the thing. Your societal estrangement, while distressing I'm sure, was relatively short-lived. These days you're a world-famous superhero, you've had dalances with models and starlets, you're currently wedded to a two-time national medal of the arts winner. I was born like this and abandoned in a dumpster as an infant. I lived in the wild like an animal until I was ten. False equivalencies help no one, sir. Thank you. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Jesus Christ. This is a prime example of why things like woke ideology ruins media for the worse. Firstly, this character who honestly I don't care what their name is just stands there looking about as generic and boring as it gets. The art is awful and these characters decide to speak only to voice how oppressed they are and why everyone should give them special treatment. Then you have another equally insufferable character design below and I just have to say I genuinely hate that modern comics feel the need to absolutely fill their panels with word vomit. Comic books are a visual medium. I understand characters need to say things, but Jesus, just look at these panels in full. I feel exhausted just looking at it. Please, Marvel, for the love of God, say more with your art and condense these essay panels. Why do woke creators feel the need to litter their awful media with walls of text? The duality of Marvel and Disney as a whole is clear that they are capable of good stories and characters at times. 
Jedi Survivor, which is a Disney licensed product, proves that the brands under Mickey Mouse are capable of telling genuinely great stories with solid characters. And the fact the same company that gave us that allows things like this to happen is why places like the American comic book industry is in such bad shape these days. As if this tone deafness wasn't bad enough, we have America's newest superhero coming to sweep the nation. What could be more popular than Spider-Man and Batman? A crossover maybe? A new Avengers book? Let me introduce you to your newest woke hero. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you The Change. <laughs> which is Dark Horse's new superhero who's written by and based off of Whoopi Goldberg. The Change is a brand new self-insert superhero whose powers come to light during menopause. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure everyone is going to want to buy this book when it releases. That's sarcasm, by the way. This will bomb for sure. Because woke creators don't care about the quality of their product. Dark Horse Comics, in their infinite wisdom, decided to make a graphic novel aimed at the middle-aged female crowd. Let's read the synopsis so we can understand just how bad this is going to be. Dark Horse said via a press release, Quote, because of her lifelong love for comic books, Goldberg decided it was time to create a new kind of superhero. One who might be a little older, whose body might be a little thicker, and whose breasts may or may not be the same size. She is also smack in the middle of menopause, which along with chills and hot flashes, also gave her some unexpected superpowers. The iconic actor, producer, and author matched minds and wits with Jamie Pagilla, someone just as outside the box as I am, says Goldberg to take the story to the next level, and thus, the change was born. Isabel Frost is a woman who has spent her life as a wife, mother, grandmother, a life she feels isn't all she had hoped for. With a husband who has grown in another direction, the press released details. A college graduate with a degree in science, Isabel is an amazing gamer who plays with people all over the country. With the help of her comic-loving grandson and irreverent best friend, she must learn to control her abilities and embrace her new identity as the change. Both the change of life and her surprising and extraordinary superpowers. End quote. So, basically, it's Whoopi Goldberg in a trench coat whose powers seem to be based on her menopausal hot flashes. Honestly, this idea would make for a decent SNL skit, but an entire graphic novel? Yeah, this is dead on arrival. Look, self-inserts are nothing new these days, and even at times it's led to genuine success as well. A good example is Berserker, which is created by and based on Keanu Reeves. The book series follows a character also called Berserker, who's an immortal warrior that fights various foes throughout different eras of history. That book series funded over $1.5 million on Kickstarter. It also got surprisingly good reviews, and now it's going to be made into an anime and a live-action film starring Keanu Reeves at some point. Honestly, on paper, Berserker just sounds like John Wick, except Keanu Reeves gets to kill people in different historical eras, which honestly sounds kind of fun. So it's not like self-inserts can't work, as Keanu Reeves clearly shows. But I can promise you there will not be an anime adaptation or live-action film version of The Change. And I'll go out on a limb here, but I don't think anybody is going to be dressing up as Whoopi Goldberg's menopausal hero at any comic expo or even for Halloween. But this is what these woke creators think you want. They believe quality is not as important as pushing messages and it's why they keep failing. You even have comic book publishers like IDW, which pushes woke ideology so much that it's effectively destroyed the brand in the process. Despite having access to IPs like Ninja Turtles, Star Trek, and Sonic the Hedgehog and more, IDW has failed because they've pushed wokeness instead of actual stories with good characters. This has led to IDW stocks dropping by 46%, and because of this, the comic company has been forced to lay off around 40% of their staff. And yet none of this nonsense would happen if you just focused on telling good stories with actual relatable characters. But these idiots would rather die than admit defeat when it comes to their ideology. And their hubris is leading to the systematic death spiral of entire brands and companies because of it. Another great example of wokeness being surface level is the comic book series The Pride. Have you heard of this one? If not, I'm not surprised since the series never really got off the ground and barely sold any copies. The Pride is created by Joe Glass and Ryan Cody and it's published by Queer Comics. Yeah, I know, they're literally called Queer Comics. Talk about making your sexuality your entire identity. Anyway, The Pride is explained according to its official description as, 
Frustrated by a lack of representation in the superhero big leagues, Fab Man decides to assemble his own team. Made up exclusively of gay and lesbian heroes, but in the process draws the attention of the Deacon, a shadowy figure who sees them as an easy target for his sinister plans. Based on this description alone, it's quite literally a team of superheroes that are brought together not because of their trauma, or dare I say willingness to deliver justice, but instead they are simply a team because they're all gay. Even the Superman-like leader of the team is Fab Man, who leaves rainbows in his wake as he flies through the air. You couldn't be more identity politically driven if you tried. It's no wonder the pride is barely known and sold next to nothing, because even if these characters are interesting, they're designed and described as existing simply as representation alone. They're the complete opposite of Cal Kestis or Marin in Jedi Survivor, or how Square Enix is going about their world with Final Fantasy XVI. The pride's entire reason for existing begins and ends with their sexuality. And that's why it never took off. It honestly sounds more like a parody and could have been a cynical deconstruction of woke identity politics, sort of how The Boys is for superhero comics. But it's played completely straight, which is funny since of how gay everything in it is. Why do you think people don't really care anymore about new superhero movies about stuff like the Marvels or the Eternals? Because all of these woke infested products exist simply for agenda's sake. And it's why it feels so weirdly out of place when I see actual strong male characters in media. The idea of having to tell real stories with actual characters is terrifying to modern day creators. Why do you think the writer's strike is happening right now in Hollywood? One of the primary reasons is because studios want to replace writers with AI and have these programs run algorithms to come up with scripts. And then these scripts will be looked over by one or two writers at best. And then the chat GPT written script can be fast tracked into a movie erasing the human touch and the cost of paying people for their creativity. You think wokeness is bad now? Just wait till Disney and others funnel their future scripts through an AI that is fed quite literally all of the woke ideological infested data it can and then takes all of that knowledge and garbage and focuses it into hundreds if not thousands of potential scripts. You think the pride is bad or crap like the change? They were created by a few people brainstorming ideals. The level of wokeified putrid sludge that will inevitably be created by the hands of AI that's been programmed by identity politics will be legendary. It'll be like a super gay version of freaking Ultron whose sole purpose is to take anything it's given and turn it into the gayest thing you've ever seen. I can't take it anymore! I just wanna die! So don't tell me talking about and calling these things out is annoying because look where complacency and not gatekeeping has brought us to. The floodgates have been opened, the woke army has rushed the king, and my friends, the throne is vacant. Woke ideology will not stop until everything you love is transformed to fit every politically correct agenda conceivable. So what will you do when the next era of garbage arrives? Will you be content standing aside while evil wins, or will you stand and call these things out and push back? Remember that history has always been written by the victor, and unless you fight back, your history and everything you love will be rewritten to fit what others deem correct. And that's why woke characters will never work, because they're not designed to do that in the first place. They exist simply to replace and reduce the status quo until they become the new standard. So if you're tired of this, then speak up, question everything, and never stop. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.